today we're going we're gonna to talk about the project bike, but first of all, we've had Ollie here today. He's been out on his bike, all finished, really happy customer. So that would be worth waiting for at the end. Um, we're going to talk about our project bike. Now, where we are with this, because the frame is going to be sent off, the, the wheel hub centers are going to be sent off. I've done a bit of prep work and we showed on the last video, we showed, I think, some things on the frame that needed to be sorted out. Um, just talk about the frame. It is only a basic A10 frame, but we have now removed the hangers on the loops for the exhaust and footrests. It just makes it a little bit cleaner because it's only going to have a single seat. Uh, the other thing that we've done on here, because what you want to, make, want to make sure is anything you do on a frame, you do it before it's powder coated or painted because you don't want to have a frame that comes back and you've got an elongated hole and you need to weld it and it's been powder coated. So what we've done with the um, main stand the support for the main stand is here. Now this is really badly worn, so all I've done was I welded up the center of the holes and tapped them back out to the correct size. Well, in fact, I've gone out to 13 mil because I've got some 13 mil rod. So that's been done. Where the swing arm fits, someone in the past has put these inserts in. Now, they could have come out, so I've just tack welded these in place. Once it's all back in situ, they can't come out but we just made sure that the frame is tidy. We might take off some of these weld splatters from when the frame was made at BSA. Dave, um, just show us the insert uh, for the, people who don't know what it is. Well here, this is where the swing arm spindle, this is the swing arm here, and through the end of this tube here, there's a spindle run through. And these inserts have been put in because possibly that was worn oversize and they wanted just to drill it out put these inserts in. I've got a feeling back in the 70s, someone started to do this bike up to their own spec. We noticed that there's a lot of parts have been chromed and it was a project that never was finished. And that's where we picked it up really. It was an unfinished project. So the frame now, what we and I always make sure, and you notice here we've taken head race bearings out. We always cap off any points that we don't want powder coating or grit getting into. So because this will be put into the blast cabinet and blasted, um, it then will be painted. Uh, I believe they're gonna powder coat this. So we don't want paint going inside here where the bearings fit. So we cap it off. Before it goes in the oven afterwards, they remove those. But it just makes the process better for me when I come to do a reassembly. Worth mentioning here who's doing it for us. Yes, the, um, the company that's gonna help us out on this project is Central Wheel Company. And they've been very kind to us here, and they're going to do our painting and our wheel rebuilding. So, nice pair of wheels and a nice painted frame, and um, some of the cycle parts in the tinware will be going to be done as well. Just talk very quickly about the swing arm. Now, anyone that's had BSAs would know that in here, in this tube here, is the swing arm, not bushes, but silent block rubbers. Now, they do wear, and also because we're going to have this powder coated, it's going to have to go into an oven and be baked. So we did want to remove the old ones. Now I'm going to show you very quickly, there's an easier way. Just put some gloves on because they're a bit manky. What are you do telling us what a silent block rubber is, mate? Well, a silent block rubber is a piece of tubing with a rubber outer and another piece of rubber, another tubing on the outside. I'll, I'll show you when I get these gloves on, what we have here. So this is the outer tube. Now, this is the, the actual uh, outer part, the silent block rubber. So this goes down inside the frame tube. There's two of these each end. Okay, and inside that, there is, it looks, try and get it back to where it should be. It looks like that. The idea is that this tube here will come to the end. There's a rod that goes right through. And the way they do it like this is so it's supported and it picks up on the other side. So you have these both like this and inside there. Okay. Now, how this works, how it works, right. So you've got the outer part, the silent block rubber. So this is the metal tube. 
They then have a, a rubber which is bonded to both sides, the outer tube and the inner tube. And how it works as a swing arm, it works on this torsion. It just, it just will twist a little bit. It doesn't have to move very much, but that relies on this torsion movement. So does that assist the rear shocks? There is a bit of, it's not a lot there, it's just a little bit of preload. I mean, you can move it, you can move it, mm -hmm. but it does away with having to have bushes in there. These normally are very good. They do last quite a long time. But the biggest problem, if they do start to fail, is getting these out. Now, how you get them out? The easiest way. When they're in situ, you can't drift them out very easily. So what I tend to do is get a piece of steel, which is undersized of the bore of this, the inner part here, and I'll push it through to the other side and I will then bring it through to here and I will weld round here because the rubber, I don't think we can show it very well, the rubber inside here leaves just a small amount here. Now we can weld this up, and then what I tend to do then, I will heat all the end of this up here because this is going to be inside. So heat this up, then this rubber will get hot and start to burn away. A lot of it should come out but this has been welded onto your drift. And when you've got that really hot with your blow lamp, give that a good bang and you should push the inner tube out. And the rubber might come out a bit like that, as this one has here. You can see it's semi-burnt and yeah, it's not very nice to wear gloves when you're doing it. Then you're left with the, the outer part of the um, torsion rubber assembly or silent block rubber. So the way you do this, same again, get another drift, which is just under size of this. Push it through in here, but before it comes out, you want to weld up, I've, you can see remains of some weld here. You want to weld up in here, build this up. So that drift, when you press it, push it in, it's going to come up against this welded area. And all you're doing then is just drifting through and it's got something to bite onto your drift. You can get it out. You might want to put a bit of heat on here with your blow lamp again, get that nice and warm and just drift it out and they come out. But it's not a nice job, but it's worth doing because I say, if you're doing a paint job and it's going to be powder coated, they have got to go into the oven and the heat process might destroy those rubbers. So let's have them out. Let's put new ones in after it's been painted and you know it's all good. So with the hubs, we've, we've taken the spokes out, cut the spokes, done away with the rims, are no good. So we take out the spindles, taking the bearings out, and we cap these off because, again, we don't want any blast material going in here, any grit, and we don't want any paint, which would be powder coating inside here when we go to fit the bearings back in. So that really is, and we left the nipple in because this one would be replaced. So like that is ready, prep, ready to go. The front hub itself, front drum, um, we're not going to do much with this because there's no point putting this in the lathe and skimming this out because when the wheel's built up, it could be pulled, it could be out of shape. Um, it's better to do any checks on the drum when it's built back up as a wheel. That's going to be blasted. So this would be all painted black. This would just be polished. So that'll look quite nice. And these other parts here, the engine plates, the, the bottom yoke, the top yoke, the headlight, They'd be blasted and painted. We're, we're going to go for possibly a, a um, gloss finish on the frame, the swing arm, and we'll probably do things, all these little bits and pieces would be, um, they'd be gloss, but we go for probably a satin headlight, and we go for a satin oil tank and battery box. So it's both sides, satin, satin, satin. So it's, it looks symmetrical. Um, the oil tank, I know a lot of people say, be careful, we have these blasted, but it does need to be done. It's got an old um, gauze filter in there, which the gauze is no good anyway. In the, in the filler cap, it doesn't really matter, we'll put a new one on here. So we blanked it all off. We want that blasted. I have washed it out thoroughly inside, it's nice and clean, so I can check it when it comes back. So that's going to be a nice satin finish. And I think it'll look nice with the toolbox the same. The backlight assembly is stripped out, ready for blasting and painting. Uh, one of the holes is welded up, but that was pretty good. Um, 
yeah, so that, that's where we are with this. So hopefully we can get those boxed up and get that sent away. So you saw the, the Gold Star before, the DB34 uh, in Clubman trim. That's waiting for set of tyres. At the moment, there's a shortage of tyres. We're waiting for the Avon Road Riders. We've got the oil tank off. We're just going to check on the oil tank. I don't think it has an issue, but we're, the customer had a bit of a leak at the back, and I think it's just the fitting with the fibre washer. Because so, this is the uh, rocker feed pipe, and sometimes you get a leak here. But we'll just do a pressure test on this. We're blank these holes off and we put an airline on in here and then we spray around here and we've seen any bubbles, we know it's leaking. So that's quite straightforward. Um, what's next to the, the Clubman is the Scrambler. Same customer. Now, we've got the tank off at the moment so you can see underneath here, you can see the engine for a change. Um, the top mount for the engine to the frame is off at the moment. We've got an Amol Powerjet carb. We're going to take this off and put a monoblock on here. Got to put the magneto back into it. Uh, need to give it a bit of a service. We'll do the valves on here. If it's correct, it has the eccentric adjusted valves. Um, if it's got different ones, it would be the ones that are adjusted from down here, like a B31 or 33. So that's going to have a number plate, a little bit of wiring. We're going to have it so you've got a brake light and backlight obviously, and we'll probably wire it through so you can have a light on the front. Total loss battery, because there's no charging on here because you've just got the um, magneto. We've got to take the main stand off and put a sump bash plate on and the side stand. So that's quite a straightforward job. So I think that's gonna make a nice green laner because that's what it's gonna be. It's, it's as a scrambler at the moment. Um, so I think it's, a nice style of bike. He feels this one should go. Uh, it's a bit low down and it, he's not riding this sort of bike anymore. And I think he's gonna get far more out of this because he's got various mates that have got this style of bike. So look forward to doing that one. Should be fairly quick. And we've got another flash in here. We've done Oliver's, but this one belongs to Thomas. And we did go over this the other day, it came in, it's got some bits on here that are wrong. I did get it running, had issues with the carb, we put a bell mouth on there for him, sorted the carb out, did run it up, but I did hear an engine noise on it, and it's one or two things I wanted to check, because if you're not careful, you can do repair work on customers' bikes, and there's things that should have been picked up, don't get checked, and that's where things are badly repaired and not done thoroughly. Okay, there's two checks I like to do really with like an A10, which this is, and an A65 when it comes in for any work. Remove the timing case cover. Take this cover off and underneath here, we expose the crankshaft. Now, both engines are very similar. You'll see the end of the crankshaft and you see the oil pump. Because it runs in a bush on this side, I always get a screwdriver and I check for this. Now. That's where the crank is moving in the crankcase because the bush is worn on this side of the, the um, crankcase. And so this is a full strip down. There's no shortcut to this. Engine's gotta be stripped down completely. By that being left like that is vibration, but also you're losing oil pressure. And if you lose the oil pressure delivery to the far side of the engine, it can reduce the lubrication to the left-hand journal. And that's where in the past, a lot of these have been blown up. No lubrication, Conrod goes for the bottom of the crankcase. Um, but that is excessive wear. So it's, a, it's gonna be a new bush. It could be just a bush, but it might be a case of we'll measure up the crank, and if that is worn, then it will need to be ground undersized with a new bush and we'll probably get SRM to do that work. If it's just a basic bush replacement, we'll probably do it here. We'll heat this up, get the bush out, put a new one in, we'll set it up in the mill, we'll clock it, and we'll just make sure it's out to the right size. I've just checked this. Now, I've mentioned before about the lay shaft and gearboxes. What I would do with this one before I do anything else is I'll just drain the oil off, 
there's a drain plug underneath here, and take this outer cover off. Because the lay shaft, we've shown it before in videos, is very similar to this. And we're better to do the same check. If there's movement like this, again, we know that we've got to do, as we've done with Oliver's job, and we've also done it with Ian's Gold Star here, where replace the bushes in the lay shaft. If the shaft is badly worn, we get a replacement shaft which has been ground under size with the new bushes. People have asked, why did I not want to take on some of these jobs? Um, I'll be honest with you, it's the amount of time. You can spend so much time, hours and hours of work, and it's so difficult to invoice all that time, all that work. I, at my age now, I'm nearly 66, I want to be a little bit more choosy what I take on. I want to spend a bit more time riding my own bikes before I get too much older. Some of these bikes, they take a long time. And when you've got a list of other customers and they're chasing you to when their bike can come in, you've got a full engine rebuild here and possibly a gearbox. And you've got a source of parts, you've got to send some parts away to be remachined. It takes a considerable amount of time. Also, it's whether the customer can afford it. Um, that's a big thing. That won't come cheap because it's outside my control some of this. It's where you have to have other stuff done by another contractor because I can't rebore. I haven't got the equipment and it needs to be done. The crank ground in a special piece of equipment and it's all got to be done properly. Um, so it does take a lot of time stripping, building, doing it correct. So yeah, there's no easy fix sometimes these bikes. So sometimes, you know, this one's different, he's a young guy and he knows it's going to be expensive, but he can't do it cheaply. So today we've got Ollie's bike finished. Here's Ollie. Nice to meet you, Ollie. Hello. And a uh, bit of a journey this bike. If you sit in the workshop a few times and it's now sorted out. But Ollie, I think, was inspired by our channel. So Ollie, in your words. absolutely. I mean, I've been watching this channel for some time. Um, of course, th th this is my first introduction into classic bikes, into owning a classic bike. And it's been quite the journey to get to, uh, to this stage today. So um, I'm, I'm really very excited for this to be done and to, for it to be enjoyed. You did have a few issues when you purchased this bike. It wasn't quite as it is now. So if you want to just tell us how you felt and what disappointment you felt was there. Of course, well, well I went through this whole process of buying uh, the bike back in March, uh, March sort of time, we're in uh, August now. And I got this from an online auction and it was sold uh, as seen, right? So uh, right off the bat, I accepted straight away that it would at least have to be looked into. Um, I started riding it for a few miles, noticed there were things not quite right here and there, and I'm not me mechanically inclined. So it, it, was, it was a no brainer for me to reach out to someone like yourself, um, someone who knows these bikes inside and out, to properly look at it, to work on it, tell me what needs to be done uh, and for it to be uh, put together as it is now. And so th this is where we're at with it. I think at the time you said to me the main issues were with like the gearbox. The engine was running quite sweetly yes. at the time. Yes. It was running, but you couldn't select gear. I've come in now, what we found. So when the bike came into the workshop, well actually I rode it around the yard first and I found when I tried to select gear, you notice when I'm pulling or pushing on this gear lever, it self-centralizes. Well, this wouldn't before, it would just jam. So the selection of gear, it was very difficult to select gear. We did find that the gearbox, this is in a previous video, the level filler, sorry, the level uh, plug here, because you fill the oil in here, the level screw was missing. We found that there was no oil at all in the gearbox. So what we've done, 
first was we removed the timing case cover. We checked to make sure the crank was okay, which we always do with these, and we removed the outer cover from the gearbox. We found the lay shaft um, bush very badly worn. And in the video, it was shown that we got a reconditioned lay shaft with new bushes, and that's been done. We had to take the gearbox out completely because we stripped this down in situ, you'll see in the previous video. Then I took the whole shell out, stripped it down in the, uh, in the workshop, and then put the case in the, uh, in the oven to warm the case to get the bushes out. So it's had full gearbox. We did find that I said to Ollie, we'll look at the oil leaks on the top. So we had the rocker box off. We found that when we took the pipes off, very oily. So we investigated further. So took the head off, checked the valves. We recut the valves, done the valve seats. Movement on the pistons was quite excessive. So we removed the barrel, measured the barrel. It was out of limits on whether you could put rings back in. So we had that sent off to SRM uh, down in Wales and they'd done a rebore, supplied new pistons. So it's had quite a bit of work when that was sent off, we went through the rest of the bike. We checked the wiring out. Uh, we'd done various things like, we sorted the brake out. He had no proper adjustment on his front brake. We've given that back to him. We checked the wiring in the voltage regulator, cleaned up the dynamo, overhauled the magneto, cleaned out the carburetor. So it's had a bit of work done to it, but it now runs really sweet. So. It's, it's nice to ride, isn't it? Yeah, and, and what you're saying, Dave, is basically it's a new bike, as, as opposed to when it came in a few months ago. And of course, we took it out um, earlier today, and it, it really is a, a world of difference. What was interesting is Paul Roddy was trying to ride this before with the gearbox as it was. <laughs> so it wasn't a true ride. So today we've been out. So that's the first time he's had to ride that bike as it should be. So we've done a few miles and under a bit of pressure with filming the rest of it, I think you've done really well. Well, I think it's great fun. And, and for me, you know, going down this journey of, of owning a classic bike or uh, and, and, and enjoying a classic bike is that I'm so used to the modern bikes and, and the, the, the workings of electrics and uh, modern technology on bikes where everything just works. And there's a certain finesse to these kind of bikes that I'm learning very quickly. And there's a certain commitment that someone has to have when riding these bikes that th th there's going to be a little bit of learning here and there. What you find is these old bikes do have soul. Yeah, there's a bit more of course. Tools. And as I said to you, you can pick up your tools and, and I said to Ollie, you need the manual, which he's got, correct mm -hmm. manual for it, so he can read up and see the adjustments. And But the biggest thing with any maintenance, if you clean the bike, keep the bike clean, you're checking it over at the same time. So that's, that's a good one, really. Yeah, of course. And, and th there's always a certain acceptance that anyone who's not used to a classic bike, uh, is used to a modern bike for example, there has to be a willingness to want to work on these things or learn more about mm. them. You know, they, they need to be looked after. It is, they're, they're not a modern bike, they, they do need a, a certain amount of love and as you say, the, the, the soul needs to be looked after. And so I think when I went down the journey of, of acquiring a bike like this, um, that was certainly part of the process, the thought process as to, I want to learn more about these bikes. I want to be able to look after them properly, enjoy them properly. And, and this is what I'm learning already. What is so nice, the fact that you're a younger audience and to have your generation wanting to pick up on these old bikes, that's brilliant. Um, I was probably about your age when I had one of these, it's exactly the same. Yeah. And it is so nice to see the enthusiasm in you. And also seeing you know, a smile on your face. And you, you rode very well first time riding something like this. And it's not easy riding with people that are trying to get you to do certain things in a certain way for filming. So I think you've done really well. Sure, well, I appreciate that. And I think uh, the, 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 the whole process has been, uh, it's been really fun for me. Um, you know, the fact that we've got a bike, or we've taken a bike that, let's be honest, was 20 years kind of neglected, it wasn't really looked after properly, we've then got it to a stage, or you've got it to a stage, where it can be enjoyed now, and we can take it out, and it'll take a bit of time to get used to. All you gotta do is, like I say, get used to it. It yeah. will need a bit of running in. As we said, it's had a rebore. We've rebuilt the gearbox, and it, because the gearbox was running with no oil in, problems with the lay shaft, the gears will bed in a little bit. You'll lose yeah. a little bit of that noise yeah. that will go. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm so pleased that you got on well with it today. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasure having you down. And uh, you know, no pressure having you know the guy that's put back together out with you. And had it have gone wrong, it would have been on me, wouldn't it? Well, no, but it's been, it's been it, a joy. It's I been think a joy. it went really well, and um, no, it's good. It's, it's been, been a joy. Good. Challenges, Ollie, on this today. 
Yeah, the challenge is so, so uh, already I'm learning that, of course, you get used to a, a modern bike and I'll ride, I ride a 2022 Yamaha. So, uh, of course, the gearing on a classic bike and this classic bike is completely flipped upside down. So we're on the right hand side now <laughs> instead of the left hand side and it's upside down. So first is up and everything else is down and trying to find neutral, of course, that's going to take some finesse to, to get used to that. Um, and of course I'm going to have to get used to a kickstart now as well. Yeah, um, yeah. you know, uh, it's not something I've been used to, uh, in the past, of course, but we always know when there's someone new to kicking a bike, cause bikes these days, you turn the key and press <laughs> yes. a button. So when it yes. comes to kicking, you always see this, like, yes. And it's like we think, uh, girly kick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to learn from the master because. Uh... But no, you do really well. But the clutch itself, just say to people, um, has got a triumph clutch in here, mm. and it's a case of sometimes. What I always say to people is, pull the clutch in before you start the bike. Pull the clutch in, and just free off the kickstart. Now you see that's nice and free. Sometimes. If the bike's been ridden, it gets warm, and if you leave it overnight or for a few hours, you sometimes can find that you pull the clutch in and it won't go down. It's like that solid, and you have to free it off. That's nice and free. Um, selecting gear, you need a quite a steady tick over, slow tick over, but it's important to have this correctly adjusted. Over adjusted, you could end up the clutch slipping. Show us how you, while you're talking about that, just show us how you have it adjusted for now. So we, on here, there is a bit of free play here. We, we don't want any more than, we don't want less than that. Show us. That there is, what can you can do is you can over adjust this and what you do is you take the pressure, you take that off of the plates, you're pulling mm. back the pressure plate. So it will cause the engine to make that clutch slip. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that you've got the full drive. So it's important to have that right. If that was very slack there, you would go to put it into gear, it would grind gear. Mm -hmm. Also, when I was trying to kick it over with the clutch in, it wouldn't be like that. It'd be very stiff. I'd try and mimic. It would semi go down. So, as I said, when you read this up in the book, it will make itself quite obvious to you. Um, but another little tip I said to Ollie that when you're riding this, when you're um, coming to stop, you can do it from second gear or you might be in first gear, but just pull your clutch in as, you, as you're still moving, just bring your gear lever and just depress it a little bit. You'll find neutral on the move more easy than when you are when you're stopped. It's sometimes they do, when they get a bit warm, they're harder to find neutral. Mm -hmm. But if you do it on the move, it's easy. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's something that, that, you know, when we talk about learning new things about riding these bikes and looking after them, that's, that's certainly something that I'm going to have to, you know, practice and get used to. Because on, on, a, on a modern bike, of course, it's, you've got the little lights telling you everything yeah, up front. Yeah. You know, on here, it's, it's, uh, most of it's on feel, of and course. Another thing is, if you're not used to kicking a bike over, and you have it off the main stand, and you're yeah. just sitting on the bike, you can lose your balance. So I said to yeah. Ollie, get used to it by keeping the bike on the main stand and kicking it. You know the bike's not gonna fall over and you'll get used. It's of just, isn't that super high compression, but because it's been rebored, it's full compression. It's not losing that compression. The valves have been done in the head, so it's a good solid compression and you just need to get used to it. Mm -hmm. But you've done very well. And the bike behaved itself very well. Yes, it did. So, um, yeah, I, th I think really, we'll, we'll talk later on about a little few things that you, you might need to have later on in the way of tools, because obviously you want the right tools for doing these bikes. But um, it's great having your enthusiasm in this old bike and seeing you with it today, you've been good for me. Well, thanks very much. And I, I'm very well positioned to be able to learn from, from some of the best that, that know about these well, bikes in and out. So I don't know about that. I, I, th I think you do. <laughs> I think, you know, I'm very fortunate. There's a lot of people that will watch this channel and, and, and wish that they were closer to the workshop. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to have you look over this. So I think it's been very great. Very kind of you. you thanks, bet. Ollie. You thanks bet. very much. Thank you. Before we go, tell us, Ollie, that story about what got you into the BSA. Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, of course, I've been I've been interested in classic bikes for some sort of time, but I'm fortunate to live in an area in Surrey that has uh, a good bike community mm. around. 
Um, in Guildford, there's a place called Newlands Corner, which is yeah, uh, right. it's like a bike hangout. There's uh, lovely views of the North Downs and there's cafes there. And typically, of course, it'll be it'll be full of, of the modern bikes, you know, super bikes coming along, adventure bikes, all this and that. And there was a there was a chap that that rocked up on this on this old machine, uh, and it, it was like this beacon of light coming through because it was so different to everything else that was there. And I got chatting to him, and I said, well, what, "What is this?" You know, he said, "It's a BSA Gold Star," and it's the first I'd heard of a Gold Star. And this is a few years back, and and the passion that he had for this bike was palpable mm. and it, I, I was just interested in that straight away and I think you know that was one of the original um, uh, instances when I was exposed to a classic bike in person chatting to the owner and, and genuinely feel and feeling like well there's a sense of community here for one yeah but two you know that how do I get into this myself and here we are sitting with a with a golden flash some some years later and I think uh, that that just perhaps ignited something uh, within you know, getting down this journey, I think. Ah, oh, it's, it's really interesting. And without further ado, let's start her up. Maybe Ollie. <laughs> Ollie. Oh no, why, why would you do this to me, mate? <laughs> you know, you've got to put your fuel on. Yeah. All right, so let's, that, let, let's start there, this here. Yeah. You need a, a little tickle, you think? No, I shouldn't do. We can get a little bit, yeah, go on, get a little bit. All right, let's try it, shall we? 